when children read, they're not just picking up language, they're not just picking up words on the page, but they are learning about the world, they are learning about how to communicate with other people, and they are learning to see the world around them through books. Some authors have gone so far as to say that books are mirrors and windows into other worlds. So they are windows because through books you can look out and you can see what other worlds look like. They are mirrors because when you look at a book, you can see a reflection of yourself. Now, when we think about reading books as mirrors and as windows, we want to expose our children to many different kinds of books so that they can see how varied and how wide the world is. What makes a book suitable or even indispensable to your child's reading journey? Today, I'm going to introduce you to the different kinds of books that you can use with your children as well as the kinds of questions that you can ask when you're reading with your child. One of the most basic books is the simple concept book. A concept book introduces a concept, things like ABCs, one, two, three, you see many of these with animals, for example. And what a concept book does is that it allows children to make connections between what they see in the world and language. And in this concept book, you'll see ducks over there. And what my dad, yes, the children's grandfather has done is that he's even taken these little labels and pasted the Chinese words on them. So it becomes a bilingual concept book. He's reading the newspapers. Many people think that books have to have words, but there are books such as these wordless picture books, which are really, really great to encourage discussion. It allows you to talk with a child and it becomes a place for asking questions and going through the day. Another wordless picture book, Welcome to the Zoo. When you have a book where you can talk about the zoo, it becomes something that they're interested in. And if you look closely, you will see different things happening. And rereading wordless books are great because they allow you to look closely and talk about things and discover new things. For example, the zookeeper is chasing an ostrich and then you kind of see the ostrich walking and the zookeeper is walking. So there are actually multiple stories going on in this wordless book. And when you're reading it with your child, you can talk about these different stories. So you could be reading one book, but each reading is a different reading. So another kind of book you can introduce your children to are level readers. What typically happens is that you've got 1A, 1B, 1C and it tells you that when a child is able to read books of a certain level, you can then move on to the next level. Typically, they have familiar words that are repeated. So if you look at this book, here is a shop. Here is a toy shop. So they are repeated words and that actually helps the child with word recognition. And what is exciting is that there are local books that are set in local context, such as this Timmy and Tammy series. And it's nice because it says here Timmy and Tammy on Pulau Ubin, Timmy and Tammy on the MRT. And these books allow you to talk to your children about the everyday things that they see and experience while learning to read. Another type of book that really works with young children, rhyming books. The Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss is something you're familiar with. Let me just turn to the first page and read. The sun did not shine, it was too wet to play, so we sat in the house all that cold, cold, wet day. So the nice thing about rhyming books is that it sticks, it's good for memorization, and there's such a musicality to it. You can get the children to sing with you, they can chorus with you, and very often if you read a book long enough and often enough, the kids even began to read along with you. We also have local rhyming books such as Sing a Song of Hawker Food. And the nice thing about these is that, again, it allows the children to connect these rhymes with what's around them. So, for example, Jack and Jill have a barbecue. Okay, let's go. Jack and Jill went up the hill to celebrate Jack's birthday. Don't rush Jill, who took a spill and dropped the Ota Ota. You as a parent or a teacher 
can ask more questions when you're reading a book with your child. It really, really expands the learning possibilities when you do this. So there are three kinds of questions that you can ask. You can ask referential questions. These are direct questions. For example, what is this? And the child says, this is a penguin. It's pretty easy, but it gets them talking and identifying what's on the page. You could ask story-specific questions, which again ties into the book. So what is the bear doing? The bear is eating. And that stays within the book, but it helps the child to process what's happening in the story. Finally, you could ask story general questions, which get the child to think outside of the book. So these could be questions such as, what do you think of the story? What do you feel about the story? What do you think will happen next? These are higher order thinking questions. And this helps the child to process the ideas, the characters, the thoughts about the story to think about the world at large. What is probably most important as the child gets older are narratives books. So narrative books like The Crane and The Crab by S.R. Nathan are books with stories in them. And why are these important? Studies have shown that when parents use narrative books with children, they tend to ask higher order questions. So instead of just, what is this, what is that, sort of very direct questions, you can get them to predict, you know, what will happen next in the story. Do you agree with this character? What do you feel? Is he a sensible fish? I think so. And this allows them to evaluate, to infer, and it really gets them thinking. The next book I want to introduce you to are series books. They typically have a familiar character. And the idea here with series book is when a child likes a character, they want to read more books about the same character. There are all kinds of series books. And in fact, some of them you might be familiar with, such as Peppa Pig, Frozen, Sleeping Beauty. If you're tired of Peppa Pig, Paw Patrol or Disney Princesses, it's okay. It's just a stage. Indulge them and get them more books to do with these characters because it will motivate them to read. Kids really like Lift the Flat books because there's so much discovery. There's the tactile feeling of handling a book and there are interesting facts that are hidden in the book. And it becomes a way for them to play. The other thing I want to highlight about books is that we're not just talking about fiction, but non-fiction is also very important. So here you see a book, See Inside Ancient Rome. When we expose kids to non-fiction, they get to read about different parts of the world in different ways. I think it's also important to expose children to diverse literature about different things that are happening in the world. Some of the things that we can do is to ask ourselves, do I have books about special needs? Do I have books about other cultures? Do I have books about death and disability on my bookshelf? If you're planning to buy a book or you're planning to go to the library, ask yourself, is there a book that I can borrow? Is there a book that I can buy that will fill that missing gap in my child's world knowledge? There's one other thing that a parent can do when reading with a child. The child loves dramatization. And sometimes you can use props, but most often you can just use your voice. You can read a story out loud, you can pretend to be a character. And if you're reading a book that the child is familiar with, get the child to be one of the characters. And in this way, you can interact and read a little bit less. Here is a game that they like, said the cat. They like to fly kites, said the cat in the head. No, not in the house, said the fish in the pot. The important thing about the shared book reading experience is that you are interacting with a child, you are doing the reading together with a child. And during this reading experience, what is really important is that you, as a parent or teacher, should be taking the opportunity to ask the child questions, to get the child to think about what's on the page, as well as make connections between what's on the page and what's in the world out there. <music>